What's up guys? Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So this week we're going to talk about how we can take multiple objects and scale them in place inside of Rhino. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in this situation, what I have is I have a collection of lights in here that um, I want to rescale. So I brought these lights in from Blender, um, but basically what I want to do is I want to take these objects and I want to make them, uh, we'll say one and a half times as big, but I don't actually want to move them. Or we could actually probably make them half the size they currently are. That probably makes more sense. But right now, if I was to type in scale, what that's going to do is that's going to make me pick a base point and then a reference point, and that's going to move everything around, which is not necessarily what I want because I want them to keep their same base locations. And so what we want to do in a situation like this one where we want to keep them in the same location is we want to use a tool called Box Edit. So we're going to select these objects. We're going to type in Box Edit, hit the Enter key. That's going to pop up a little window that looks like this. And so what Box Edit does is it lets you set things like the scale of an object, either by selecting one axis direction like this, or by picking the uniform direction, and it's gonna scale them like this. Now this is already set up for me, but you'll probably see something that looks a little bit more like this when you first do this. So same issue, right? It's gonna to try to resize these objects and they're gonna get moved around. Now what we can do though, is we can set that we want this these objects to be pivoted using their bounding boxes, but we wanna make an adjustment here. And, and so what this option is going to do is it's gonna allow us to set the point from which these objects are scaled. And so what that means is that means that right now, if we were to pick the gumball, for example, we'd get basically the exact same result that we got before where it's going to scale them based on an arbitrary point and they're gonna get all moved around. We wanna pick the object bounding boxes right here. And when we pick the bounding boxes though, we wanna set a different location on the bounding box. Cause basically a bounding box is a box that would go all the way around one of these objects like this that represents the boundary or the bounds of the object. Well, in this case, we wanna use the bounding boxes, but we wanna use a different part of the bounding box. In this case, we want to use the minimum part of the Z so the Z is gonna be the vertical axis right here. And so we wanna say, use the minimum part of the bounding box around this light. And so we still have a problem. And the problem here is that this is basically using the central bounding box of everything in this selection. So instead of it being each individual object, it's got a bounding box around all of these and it's scaling these relative to that. And you can kind of see that right here. Well, there's an option down below that we want to check called transform objects individually. And so when you transform those objects individually, and actually it's helpful to show this bounding box right here, because then you can actually see this bounding box point. And so now when we do this, we scale it down, notice how those objects are going to scale in place right here. So instead of those objects scaling and moving around, notice how they're scaling in place without actually losing their location in your scene. So I can take all of these, I can scale them, right here in place and I can click on apply in order to keep them in the same location, but scale them down to half the size. And then if I ever wanted to like scale them back up or um, even add additional um, things to this. So for example, if I wanted to rotate them in place like this, you could use the rotation, the rotation function in order to do that as well. So once you get this set up so that you're transforming your objects individually and you've got your pivot point location, which you can now see because we turned our show bounding box on, um, this is actually really easy to do. That's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.